Well, hello, and a warm welcome to you all, even though it is getting a bit crispy weather-wise. Today our focus is on those who have been an example and encouragement to us in, times of, in terms of our faith. The greatest encourager is Jesus, who said, If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me, and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you. Put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear, and this burden is light. So now let us come and worship God. Let us come together in prayer. Lord, as we come and worship, we are thankful, Father, for those who have gone before us, those pioneers of the faith who have braved the storms, made the sacrifices, fought the good fight, and kept the faith. May we, in turn, leave for others a legacy richer than gold, an example worthy to be followed. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
The first reading is from the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verses 1 to 10 and 22. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. The second reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. The third reading is from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Thanks be to God. Amen. If you are reading or listening to this service on November the 1st, it will of course be the day after Halloween when you may have seen or been out with little ones disguised as different characters or animals and trick-or-treating. 
You may be also thinking of going out to buy some of the leftover treats on sale at various stores. To quote the late comedian Tim Conway, Mmm, good. According to some historical documents, and there are a number of varying accounts, Halloween was a, a Celtic practice when people dressed up in various disguises and danced around bonfires to scare away the ghosts of the nether regions. A rather ghoulish practice, wouldn't you say? To this day, Halloween often focuses on the, the appeal to scare people, which some people like. Today, though, November the 1st, has a much more positive focus on the spirit world and that it was instituted way back in the 700s by Pope Gregory III and then Gregory IV in the 800s and now by a number of other Christian denominations to remember Christian people who have died and who were an inspiration in their lifetime here on earth. So today is called All Saints Day. When we think of saints, Usually we think of familiar ones like Jesus' disciples, with the exception of Judas, of course, and other early church people like St. Timothy, St. Paul, St. Patrick, St. Valentine, St. Augustine, St. Joan of Arc, to name a few. And then if you travel the roads of especially Quebec, you will find numerous towns and streets bearing saints' names, many which are totally unfamiliar to us, but who in certain calendars have special days in the year commemorating them. But All Saints Day is to recognize all saints who have died. So then, who is a saint? Well, according to the scriptures, time and again, we see that a saint is anyone who is seeking to follow God as we know him through the scriptures. And that can be me and you too. Cool, eh? We see this in Psalm 34 that Craig read from, where in verse 7 the writer says, To fear or respect the Lord, you his saints. See the word saints? Also in the New Testament letters, also known as epistles, the church people were addressed as saints. These were not perfect people, and they had a lot of spiritual growing to do. But if you look at what St. John wrote, they were people who rejoiced because they knew that God loved them. And they knew that even though they were having troubles now, this world was not all there was to their lives. They knew there was a better life coming for them to anticipate. In the book of Revelation, which John also wrote, and which is kind of hard for us to understand, because it speaks of a time that we've not yet experienced, John talks about the glory and the triumph of Jesus and God's people who've endured and overcome the trials of this earth. Often we hear part of that passage at times when we're laying loved ones to rest. Do you recall the words, They will not hunger nor thirst. The Lamb, Jesus, at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Does that sound familiar to you? This was and is a perspective of great joy for those who believe. How sad for the atheist perspective, who think that this life is all there is, so if it's messed up, life has truly been the pits and there's nothing more. But even for the Christian, life is often truly difficult and can be even more so because we are called to follow the example of loving people as Jesus did. And that's really hard to do sometimes, and often also leads to confusion amongst people with other values. Just look at the opposition people are getting and, and standing up for the unborn, for those opposing euthanasia, for those caring for the poor, just to name just a few. But the writer to the Hebrews encourages people to not give up, to keep on in the race. He says we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses in the grandstands and along the path roadways. Uh, just look at the previous chapter where the writer mentions some familiar Bible people that are encouraging us to keep going. 
Can you hear them? Can you see them? They are cheering us on today, too. What is a saint? We have the biblical definition as one who is a follower of God in the Old Testament and in the New Testament in following God through Jesus. But I also like what one child read, said. One summer morning she stood in the great cathedral watching the sunlight stream through the beautiful glass windows. The Bible characters in the windows were bathed with the brilliant colors that resulted. When she was asked, What is a saint? she replied, A saint is a person who lets the sun shine through. Get that? A saint is a person who lets the sun shine through. Can we think of people in our lifetime through whom the sun, Jesus, has shone through? A child, a teacher, a parent, a sibling, a store clerk, a camp counselor, a church member, a spouse? I can think of several. Who comes to your mind when you think of someone who has been a true example of God's love for you? They may be here yet, or they may have already won the race. And still, in thinking of them, we are filled with gratitude to God and encouraged. And in the words of the Hebrew writer, Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Thanks be to God. Amen. leading into our prayer this morning is a more recent hymn written by Joy Patterson from Wausau, Wisconsin, who uh, may still be a French professor and a homemaker. And she writes about uh, John, who is known as the beloved disciple of Jesus. And 
uh, he wrote the Gospel of John and the letters of First, Second, and Third John and the Book of Revelation. Let us come together in prayer. O oh God, Heavenly Father, we thank you today for calling us your saints. In spite of our unholy lives, you look at us and see Jesus' perfect life and death covering ours. We thank you for this grace. We thank you for every Christian who has helped us on our journey and encouraged us to keep believing when we fell for giving up. We thank you for all those who taught us the faith. We thank you for those who made the ultimate sacrifice of their lives to ensure others could hear of your love in Christ. Today we remember the saints in heaven. We thank you for releasing them from the burden of sin and death in this life and for keeping your promise to them. We especially remember those from our community who have passed away in the past year and even in previous years. We remember them with love. We pray that you might give comfort to all those who grieve over loved ones no longer with us on earth. Give them the hope only your word can offer us. And we pray for your church on earth, that it may remain faithful to Jesus' teaching, and that it will strive for unity. We pray for all Christians, especially those under persecution, that they may imitate the martyrs in bold witness to the gospel. We pray for those who are not yet part of your church and for those who have left it, asking your spirit to convince them of your love for them in Jesus. And we pray for the enemies of the church and for those who curse your saints. We ask that you might bring peace to those nations in conflict and where there is political instability. Please guide the decisions of our American neighbors as they seek to choose who will lead them via the upcoming election. We pray that you will protect those who are poor and hungry and give them hope. Move those with plenty to share with those who have little. And help all people to love their neighbors as themselves. Please be with all those who are in physical, mental, and spiritual distress 
We ask for your healing and comforting spirit to be with them. O God of life, we give thanks for the love you have shown to the world through all your saints, and we celebrate our continuing communion with them whenever we worship. We look forward to being part of the crowd around your throne in heaven on the last day. And in the meantime, keep us looking to Jesus and help us to keep giving a clear witness to Him, living holy lives you call us to live by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. rejoicing. Surrounded as you are by such a great cloud of witnesses, take courage as you face each new challenge, and comfort when you pick yourself from a fall. In whatever good you choose to do, proceed it, precede it with hope, accompany it with prayer, and follow it with thanksgiving. And the blessing of God most wonderful, whom the saints have trusted as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will be with you now and evermore. God bless you, everyone. Amen.